Hello friends, refusing to play Dota until this hero gets nerfed here, bringing you another Dota 2 video on behalf of Dota Alchemy, in which we're going to be talking about how Aoi 2000 plays the single greatest hero in Dota currently. Now I see some of these other YouTube channels talking about Drow Ranger, Bowie just made a video, GameLeap just made a video on Drow Ranger, uh... Void Spirit, the new heroes, of course, and don't get me wrong, I love those heroes. They're great, they're good for gaining MMR, but this hero, this hero is something else. I legitimately know people, I was joking in the intro, but I legitimately know people that aren't playing Dota until this hero gets nerfed. So if you want to gain some MMR, now is the time for it. Tree and Protector sitting out about a 58% win rate as one of the most picked heroes in pro-level pubs on Dota 2 Pro Tracker. And keep in mind, that win rate is deflated by the fact that this was one of the worst heroes in 7.23, and then it got buffed. So the real win rate is probably around 60 to 65 percent so definitely get your mmr while you can and do what aoi 2000 does in his games to win with treant protector first and foremost aoi plays this hero in the four position he starts with orb of venom one tango one healing self so a bunch of regen and then a pooled tango and sharing tangos to this hero makes quite a bit of sense given how this nature's guy's ability works it gives you 25 percent heal and regen amplification which means your leech seed is going to be amplified and your tango and salves are going to be amplified so this is a trading hero more so than ever and of course this was already a trading hero so he runs down here and he goes for the rune by the outpost the rune by the edge of the map before the game starts but he does scout a little bit just to see if he's going to be up against two heroes or up against one hero trying to take this rune. It looks like nobody's really going for it. He still runs down to this area to kind of scout to see maybe there's like a hiding uh, vengeful spirit or something like that that's going to walk up and try to stun for the rune. Just to get an idea of uh, whether or not the enemy heroes are going for the rune. And if the venge tries to walk up to get into position to snipe this, he's already down here to stop that. So the venge, instead of just having to walk up and stun and maybe trade a couple of right clicks to get the rune, the Venge has to trade possibly her life for the rune. That's why he positions down here instead of like up here. And this is just a really nice uh, little positioning trick where it's it's forcing the enemy team to have to use two heroes to get this rune, which, you know, they, they go for this one because it's just snaking over here. So he gets this rune guaranteed because of this positioning. So he starts with Leech Seed, and this makes a lot of sense because if you look at the mana cost for the damage and the healing that it does, it does 75 damage, 26% movement slow, which is a very good slow for a level 1 ability, and then it heals you for 15 per second, so 75 healing, but that's amplified by 25%. So the way that he plays the first wave is very important, and the reason that I say that this is incredibly important is because I very rarely see this when I'm doing coaching or when we're doing our replay reviews, that this this just doesn't happen in like the lower rated brackets because supports are too afraid of like taking their cores farm, and it actually results in both heroes just ending up being under farmed and losing lanes because there's this idea that like supports can't take farm. So Aoi, on the very first wave, because he has 91 base damage and he has a Dark Seer, this hero's not all that great at last hitting. His Iron Shell does a pathetic amount of damage, and there are two heroes sitting here trying to deny. So Aoi walks up, and he goes for the last hits. And you can see here that the Void Spirit was trying to go for the deny, and he was close to getting the deny. If Dream Protector didn't have about 100 base damage, he would have got the deny. Look at the HP that was left on the creep. Like, basically, Aoi made it so that this guy had to deny from such a high HP that he wouldn't get the deny because he knows that Aoi was going for it. So if you're a Trant Protector and your core isn't CSing or there's a ranged creep that you need to CS, you know how you see Crystal Maidens use the Crystal Nova to get the ranged creep CS? That's your job on a Trant Protector, except you have to go up and right click the range creep. And what that does is that actually uses your body to soak spells and harass from the enemy team as well, which is what you should be doing as a tanky frontline strength hero in the laning stage. And that's what you should be doing as a support hero 
in the laning stage. At a certain point, Aoi's offlaner becomes self-sufficient. And I think this is a really important point if you're looking to play pause for in general, uh, and especially if you're looking to play tree because of how the new uh, nature's guise works. But at a certain point, your offlaner doesn't really need you there permanently. Like in this situation, Darkseer is just cutting. In some situations, the creep equilibrium is just right here. And what's the point in sitting there and helping your offlaner CS? That, that never really helps do anything. It's just soaking experience. You'd rather stack. You'd rather go gank mid. You'd rather do something else simply because if you're sitting here, you're splitting XP 50-50. But if you stack, then your offlaner goes and farms the stacks. And guess what? You get a free lane while they farm the stacks. Boom. Golden experience from nowhere. Anyway, that's a tangent. He goes mid for very similar reasons. He's not needed here. This guy is free farming, and the mid lane is a very important hero to kill, and there is kill threat because Puck has a double damage. So he walks towards the mid lane, and the reason that I say that this works with the new Nature's Guy's ability is because, for whatever reason, this three-second cooldown, it doesn't start when you leave the trees like it used to. You just walk in trees. The three-second uh, cooldown only starts if you're out of trees and somebody hits you. He presses his Q. He presses his Leech Seed far out of range because if you walk in with it, it'll just start sucking from the Huskar. And it's a free kill. And I think this is a big reason why this hero is played in a position four. Uh, and, and that's because you can roam through the jungle like this and do these kind of um, wraparounds on mid. So they kill the Huskar. And not only do they kill Huskar... Still, he's not needed in the bot lane, as you can see. Snake King moves even farther back. He goes behind the tier 2, which allows Aoi to sit mid and just wait in the trees for Huskar to come back. So, this guy, at this point, has won 2 out of the 3 lanes for his team. How on earth can you lose Dota after having such a high impact on 2 out of the 3 lanes? It's not possible. You're going to win Dota. Once he gets level 5 and it hits that point in the game, you know, where all of your cores are either jungling or ganking, and it's very clear that the laning stage has broken down. Uh, Aoi maxes out the Nature's Grasp because what he does is he essentially just finds the place on the map that his team doesn't want to play in, and he plays there. So he TPs towards this top lane because Slark just wants to go jungle. Slark doesn't want to be sitting in a lane against a possible Doom who can just Doom him. So Aoi heads towards the top lane. He goes for the outpost. The entire purpose of this hero is just to sit in side lanes and make outposts inaccessible to the enemy team by pushing the lane. And then you just run over and take them. And if the enemy team tries to come contest you because it's their outpost, you just run through the goddamn trees and then laugh at them for having wasted their teleports. And that has such a profound impact on the game. And the reason it has a profound impact on the game is because something else that Aoi does is he TPs to almost every single fight, even if the fight is in the mid lane, with how the new nature's guise works and with how the map is in terms of the trees. Like, let's look at the mid lane, for example. Look at all of the trees that you can walk through now. All of these trees, these weren't here before, and there's no high ground here. This is all low ground. And then also, Nature's Guys, that three seconds, it doesn't start until this is super unfortunate. It doesn't start until somebody does damage to you and you're standing out of trees. Like, you might have noticed that at the start of this clip, there is a 2k gold lead for the enemy team, and now they almost have a gold lead. And a big reason for that is because of bounties, because of the enemy team just going and five manning towards him minus the uh, void spirit but it's essentially the map is being allowed to be played very efficiently simply because of his positioning on the map like this dark seer can farm bot this slark can farm the triangle puck is pushing out mid for god's sakes bane was jungling in this game and the only reason that's possible is because this guy is going to the dead lane and he's pushing it out and he's getting the outposts and he's getting the bounty runes so I know I mentioned it briefly in the last clip, but I want to show you an actual example of this happening because this is rinsed and repeated for the entire game. He's sitting in a side lane, he's being annoying, he's using his little brambles, making it go through trees so it does a ton of damage, pushing out waves, which will eventually allow him to secure this outpost. And then something starts happening on the map. And because he's pushing this lane, this guy has to be up here like, oh god, I have to deal with this annoying treant protector, because guess what, if Doom isn't here dealing with the treant, He's going to lose this, and then the game is going to be incredibly hard. So he's forced to be up here. So that way, when a fight happens mid, 
Aoi can TP to it, and it's an uneven fight because Doom is not there. Oracle's even top trying to kill this damn tree and protector, trying to play near his Doom. And then he comes mid, they take the tower, and they take a bit of a map advantage uh, simply because he's forcing the enemy team out of position. So this hero is essentially a split push hero, and you aren't setting up on people unless they're in the side lanes. And if the enemy team fights towards the mid lane or the opposite lane to where you're at, you TP to it. And then you play that side of the map, and then your team plays elsewhere. That's basically how it works. This hero is kind of like a carry, where your team wants to play away from you, you TP to something, you take some good fight, you take an objective, then your team plays away from you, and you just keep rotating the map that way until the enemy team loses a massive amount of gold. So the item build that our boy goes for is he goes for Veil of Discord, uh, Windlace, Tranquil Boots. After that, he builds into Solar Crest. I've also seen people go for Vlad's on Treant, I've seen people go for drums. I've seen people go for pipe of insight. Uh, essentially, what you want to do is you use your Q to split push. You use your Q to get farm. Uh, you uh, split push the lanes, force the enemy team to kind of play on the other side of the map where they're split. Like, for example, you can see in this situation, the Void Spirit went and died top, and now there's this fight bot where it's uneven. They're about to win the game here. And then he shows up with his aura items, and they win the game. Like, this hero is an enabler. You're just healing your team. You're using your Q to do a little bit of damage and slowing during the fight. You're using your ultimate to set up for your team. But your items, you don't want to itemize like Basher and Sanjin Yasha. I've seen that sort of dumb shit and that's not good. This hero is impossible to kill. You are a great aura carrier. You are, you are a great frontline tank. And uh, even if you're playing in position five, because of how this hero's play style is, you're going to get enough money to uh, contribute with uh, in team fights with uh, the, the aura build. Like you're going to have all these items uh, quite, quite easily because you do get a lot of farm. Uh, anyway, as you can see, this game is is pretty one uh, based off of that play. I mean, I know it doesn't look all that bad, but this uh, the same sort of thing continues, and then the outposts become worth more and more. Uh, the fights keep getting split, and, and the gold advantage just grows and grows as the uh, the dire gets uh, a lot of momentum in this game, and then eventually win pretty easily. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I hope to see you in another video.